So now the topic which we are going to discuss now is process chains. Okay. So what was the importance of process chains in SAP BW and why we create process chains and how to you know monitor the process chains. So these are the topics that we are going to discuss today. Okay. Not everything, but we'll try to cover as much. So how to create a process chain and what is the use of process chain first of all? Okay. Uh, in what uh, what exactly we do in SAP BW in SAP BW what we do we extract data from R3 system into BW system using ODP um, you know ODP DTPs earlier we used to do PSA step to load data into data source level and then from PSA we load data into our BW targets it, which means write optimized DS4 we load and then we load to standard DS4 and then we load to Q we do you know and then uh, we do reporting on top of it so we on date what is uh, when we initially discussing this uh, you know uh, on on the course what i said we always try to bring the er3 data into bw on nightly basis means whatever transactions happening on today morning all the transactions will be loaded into bw on night hours so by tomorrow morning, the data will be available here. For example, um, whatever transactions happened yesterday, those will be available by today morning on my BW system. So user can see the data of it. Okay. So on night basis, uh, they are loading data into BW. I mean, how they are loading data? It means uh, if you if we have the old flow PSA, this is the one. If you are using BW on uh, without this PSA step then you have you know directly ODPs are there so which will directly bring data into your standard ADS4 okay and if you have um, multiple layers are there we are going to bring into further layers but to derive the business logic but how how are we going to do are we directly going to bring the transaction data into BW no before doing any transaction load the first priority we give for the master data Okay, it means first you have to update the BW master data in our uh, BW from R3 and then you need to start your transactional data. This is the sequence of data loads, so how we perform in our, in our BW. First master data loads will be completed and then only you can start with the transactional data. So what is master data means? Uh, some examples for master data is like a zero material, zero plant, zero company code, okay, profit center all these data sources will be updated with you know not data sources all the info objects will be updated with the latest changes from r3 to bw and then we start with the transaction data so when we in bw we have n number of flows for example for sales you have a data flow separately for delivery you have a data flow separately for billing you have a data flow separately and for finance you know we have a data flow separately like this for inventory you have a data source separately means all these are different modules different data flows are there so on sales flow around you have two to three you know ads flows are there for example like two ads flows are there on sales flow okay let's assume two ads flows are there on delivery also you have two ads flows okay and they are building also you have for example two finance you have by example five you have inventory you have uh, three data flows three uh, the ads flows are there so these many ads flows are there and sometimes what will happen you will apply some ABAP logic to do lookup from sales to billing this kind of you know ABAP logics also we do it means when you are loading the billing data you are trying to read some of your sales data for some information okay it means if you are applying logic on the sales data there is a dependency sales data has to be finished first then only you can go for billing or else sales data uh, if you without fill, you know updating sales data if you go for billing then whatever logic you are writing in billing to get data from sales you may not find the hit proper hit okay we can discuss this topic in our uh, ABAP session more detail but there will be some dependencies before loading data into this uh, particular data flow so currently what I can say before loading the billing information you must finish the sales load information first that is the prerequisites okay and before updating any transactional data the dependencies mass data has to be updated first okay so on nightly basis no one will go to the cds and execute the ttp manually we cannot perform because there will be n number of objects in our bw which needs to be run on day-to-day -day basis 
So if we, if we are executing all manually, it will take a lot of time. We cannot finish our data loads also by morning because uh, some uh, we can run few parallelly, few you know sequentially. So many things will be there. Okay, so to automate this kind of process instead of running manually, so SAP come up with a concept called process chains. So using process chains, what we can do using process chains, we can automate our data loads. It means system will execute DTP one after another. It will check the first DTP successful or not. If it is successful, it will execute the next DTP. Or if there is no dependency between, you know, to for example, plant mass data is there, metal mass data is there. Is there any dependency between these two mass data? No. So when I am executing plant DTP, material DTP, parallelly I can execute the plant DTP also because there is no dependency at all. So this is called parallel execution. So based upon the dependencies, you can run the DTPs parallelly. But if you are, if I ask you to execute the DTP manually, can you do two parallelly? It is difficult. Like you have to run execute one manually and then go to a different screen or the same screen. You need to enter open DTP and then you need to run it. There is a time lag in between. Okay. So and you need to wait till the data load completed to make sure it is successful or not. Once it is successful, then you will go for the next one. So doing all these activities manually will take a lot of time and a lot of efforts also. Okay, so using as uh, this process chain concept, you can do all this in a very easy way and you can monitor also in a very easiest way. So now we are going to see how to create process chains. Okay, uh, just a second. Mm. So now we are going to see. Um, Uh, no, yeah. how to create process chain so how to create process chain so these are called as components okay in data so application components no? so these are called as you know components all these are like root nodes how we have info area to create our ads was in the same way to create any process chain we have these components available here so you can create your own component and create the process chains under it or else you know you can use any existing component also for example you see there is one already one component is created or else for us what i will do i will create one component this create the uh, display component gpc uh, gpc underscore sr like how to store all my um, process chains i am creating this component so this is just like info area there is nothing uh, you know on this one so this is my component under this component i need to create my process chain how to create process chain right click here create process chain this is the option okay so in this process chain so like in sap everything uh, starting is same right we need to provide the technical name of the process chain and the description of the process chain so as i said when we creating the process chains we always perform the master data first and then i am going to pre do my transactional data so in order to do the master data i am going to first create my master data uh, process chain so gpc underscore md it means master data process chain okay master data process chain so i am given my technical name i given my description so after giving the technical and description this is the uh, for next screen insert start process so this is the one of the mandatory steps that you need to take care so here you need to select this create button and provide the technical name whatever you provided to the chain underscore start this is the standard way of giving okay you can give whatever name you want here but the standard way of you know master data process chain start and then click on ok button this is very important step and you know here because using this is a very important you know step which you are creating now based on this only we do multiple things we can discuss at this point of time on this screen i am going to scheduled button i am going to edit options i am clicking on immediate check save that's it as of now let's save it in this way click on the save button come back one step then you know this was created earlier it is not there now you created this one and you click on OK. Don't click on cross button. Click on OK button. Okay. Then your process chain design screen will be opened in this way. Okay. Now we are going to define our process chain in the CV, the sequence of steps of parallel execution, whatever. So what I did here, I collected some of the DTPs of master data DTPs here. 
okay because when you adding here so what we are going to do in this process chain whatever you are doing manual activities those you are going to automate here so for example i have some dtps to be executed as part of my master data so these dtps i am going to add here so for that reason i have taken the technical names of my dtp so i am copying my first dtp technical name on the left hand side you can see this you see load process and post processing and dt this one so these two are there. So our DTPs will be available under, you know, here Excel flow. DTP, yeah, one second. execute info package. What happened? Execute info package. Yeah, DTP, data transfer process. You see this particular node is there right you need to select this the dtp step select double click on the dtp double click on this node and it will ask for the dtp technical name provide the dtp technical name and click on ok button so when you click on ok button you see automatically this uh, g material uh, uh, this is an ads flow okay so i create an ads flow so for ads flow so what we do we do activation also after performing this uh, you know uh, data load activation is mandatory so that's why you need whenever you are bringing the DTP automatically activation step also uh, came automatically by the SAP. So this automatic creation of this node will be happened based upon the settings we provided here. Sometimes you may not get this kind of auto, uh, you know automatic one um, here somewhere we have that one. So second. This is view on the settings. Huh? Mm -hmm. Not this one, sorry. Somewhere, uh, uh, you see, this is an option here. This is an option. So, on the settings option, default change. So, if this is unchecked, then automatically system will help you to add the prerequisite you know, steps here. But whenever you do this checkbox here, then system don't bring this activation step by default. You need to check this DTP. If, uh, if it is a DS4, standard DS4, then you need to manually add, to the, add this activation step. Okay. So then this is one DTP. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag, I'm, I'm clicking on my start button and dragging this arrow mark to my DTP. So it means I'm telling, so after, whenever this chain got started, start is nothing but your starting point okay so this is your starting point from here it is going to execute my dtp okay so nothing it is doing on the start step it is only for the starting point and then once it is started it will run this dtp so once this dtp is successful then it will do the activation step my first dtp was completed so now i am going to add my second dtp copy this one and try to add this dtp also go to this load process and then double click on the dtp select your dt give the technical name of dtp click on ok okay so when you're clicking on this ok you see this per, this particular dtp already been used in other chain so it is asking do you want to see the something i don't, don't want it because i want this dtp to be added independently on my so this is a material text master data so after your attribute master data is completed if you want to load your text master data just simply map it here so um, here what exactly you are doing you are telling under which step you want to execute this material text so after activation successful then only you are going to this dtp text dtp okay so now this is master data flow now the next dtp what i am going to take this one so let's see what is this dtp so now double click on dtp provide your dtp name and click on ok button you see now map plant so this material attribute master data and mat plant attribute master data both are independent there is no dependency between these two in such cases what you can do whenever you started the process chain you can run this dtp parallelly to this dtp in such cases you can map again from start to this one okay so what is happening so from start button by clicking on the refresh button this layout will be adjusted so whenever the change started one step comes here it will run the dtp another process will be created here and it start this dtp it means both will be run parallelly because there is no dependency i added these two parallelly 
okay so after plant uh, mat plant attribute complete successfully now i am going to add my second ttp so double click on the ttp provide your technical name click on ok button you see mat plant attr this is completed to info object now i have mat plant text also i want to execute this mat plant text after successful execution of my attribute ttp so simply drag and here to here so you are defining the path here so you see in this particular button it is having three options successful error always what exactly this means you whenever you are select this one it means whenever this dtp successfully executed then only if you wish to move to next step then you always select this one and when you this select this one whenever this dtp is failed if you want to go to next step then you have to select this one instead of failure or success you defaultly move to next step then you need to select the third step okay either failure or success ignore it and move to next step then you need to select the third one but in our production system we always go for successful one okay now click on okay button that's it so now by this time i have one eight attribute master data material and the map plant you know in for you know flow added parallelly now let me try to see the other one so i have one more thing here this is for plant i guess so i am selecting ttp click here okay so after coming into my screen i can see this you know path exactly so here on the name with the zero plant attr here i can understand okay this is a plant master data flow so plant master data flow can be run parallelly or if we, if you feel more parallel process are happening you know then you can keep it under map plant also it's up to you it's a purely our decision of uh, you know um, ha handling this one so i am adding a plant attribute plant text so i am done with my you know examples so whatever i want to uh, run as part of mass data flow i added all my dtps here and finally i am doing activation here okay done so my process chain was activated successfully and you can see under gpcr there is a master process chain is there now how to execute this one when i come i'm coming back if i double click again it will uh, it, it will see my you can see this one in this way okay now what we are going to do is we are going to execute this process chain so double click on the process chain open it and then click on this execute button schedule so when you click on schedule button it will ask for the priority just to give you know default priority and click on okay you see chain was activated and scheduled what exactly scheduled means in the start variant we maintained a scheduling option so what option we maintained immediate start it means whenever i executed my you know process chain it will start the executing of this uh, uh, next steps immediately so go to log of your uh, process chain you see it is already completed by this time so it executed all these dtps and you can see a successful green color button if these are executing you can see yellow button here if it is successful you can see green here if it is a fail then you can see red here okay even steps also will be same way if anything was failed then it will be in this way so for example what we do is to make sure this uh, proper yeah yeah this is a basics okay initial basics of the process chain in tomorrow's session we can learn more about you know in detail about many other options okay so by today i am concluding because it's successful run tomorrow we see if we something got failed how exactly it will be failed how to understand the error message and what are the different other options we have in the process chains we will cover in tomorrow session okay 